In this video, I'm going to test whether it really is worth spending the extra money on this Festool Rotex sander, or whether you can get the same result with this very basic Makita sander. I bought both of these sanders myself, and this video is not being paid for by anyone. To do this test, I'm going to sand back this 100-year-old door, which has many coats of paint on it. And that will certainly be a tough test for both sanders. And since I have five doors like this to do, I'm looking forward to the results as well. I'm not going to talk about all the specs between the two, I'm just looking at this from the angle of grabbing them and just getting on with the job. I'm using both sanders with the appropriate discs, Festool discs for the Rotex and very ordinary garnet discs for the Makita, and both are 40 grit. I'm doing a quick side-by-side -side test with both sanders and then I'll spend a bit more time looking at the Festool because it has a few tricks up its sleeve. And spoiler alert, they really are nice tricks, so stick around for those. You can see that the Festool takes quite a bit of time to get through that first paint layer, but then once it's broken through, it really starts to tear at the paint. I'm using it on the coarse setting for rough sanding and on maximum speed. In fact, once it gets going, it almost feels like you're vacuuming up the paint. And speaking of vacuum, the dust extraction is excellent. Switching to the Makita and you notice quickly just how much louder the sander is. In fact, with the Festool, you can use it quite comfortably without hearing protection. But with the Makita, you definitely need earmuffs. But what about the performance? It only has one setting, on or off, with no speed adjustment. Well, to be honest, once the Makita gets going, it also starts to tear through quite easily, giving a similar feeling of just vacuuming up the paint, if I can put it that way. Extraction is also quite good, but I'm using this special adapter for the Makita, which I made especially for this sander, and it makes a huge difference. I was quite surprised by how well it worked, and soon started to wonder whether I'd made a really expensive mistake. But something you don't notice until after you've been using it for a while is that the Festool has much better ergonomics. It's easier to hold and control for longer periods of time than the Makita. The design of how you hold it is just better. In terms of simple performance to rip the paint off, there's actually not a huge difference. The real trick with the Festool is the interchangeable head. It's quick to change over to the delta head, and once you get used to switching between the two, you can really start to speed things up. It's awesome for getting into corners, and also good for working on small edges. Again, this is where the ergonomics comes in, because it's very easy to hold at 90 degrees to get into those corners. Although, I did end up giving in to using a heat gun to get as much paint out as I could, and that's a dangerous thing. Not that the heat gun is dangerous, it's just that you start asking yourself seriously, about how much paint you really want to remove. It's when you take the Rotex to the door frame that you see another level of benefit. Being relatively light, at about one and a half kilos, it's easy to do vertical work. The delta head is great for the smaller edges, and the handle allows for easy repositioning when working down low to the ground. And detaching the hose is simple on the Rotex for when you need to quickly vacuum up the dust that got away. Not that there's much. The delta head has excellent extraction. Overhead work is also much simpler. You really appreciate the design of the handle for this kind of work. Even when sanding up against glass, really tight edges or tiling, the Rotex with the delta head is very steady and you start to really appreciate what this thing can do. There's just no way that you could achieve this with the Makita. And look, let's be fair, it probably wasn't designed for that in the first place. But the Makita did make a comeback on the door frame with the wider sections in the middle. For the door frame, I was never going to get all the paint off, but the resulting surface is good enough. Some new coats of paint, quick adjustments to the hinges on the door, and it all came back together very nicely. Overall, the job worked out really well, and I'm very happy with the outcome. So is the Rotex worth it? Um, yes. Now, I had to think about that because you might be wondering why I didn't just replace the door. Well, I've got five to do in total, and at about $600 per door, the Rotex is starting to look pretty good at around $1,000. Plus, I get to keep the original style of the doors, and I get to keep the Rotex, and use it on other jobs, which I've already been doing. For simple jobs that don't require too much detail or finesse, then this Makita will work very well for you, and for $85, you can't really go wrong. But if you have complex work to do, and you like the quieter motor, the better handling, the interchangeable head, uh, the sanding modes and the speed settings, then you'll be very happy with this Rotex, and I'd certainly recommend it. 
Now, what about those other doors? Well, there's plenty more work to do. If you found this video helpful, then the video you should watch next is where I do a quick test on the dust extraction performance of this Makita sander. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.